Okay. Yeah, sounds like I'm on. Cool. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Hi. And thank you for coming uh, to the Women's Conference. A uh, lot going on, man. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with prayer because there is so much going on. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up with a prayer from the Bible um, in Ephesians 6, 18, and 19. Uh, if you want to look at that, you can. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he prayed. He Well, he, he told people that they needed to pray this prayer for him. And if people would pray the prayer for him, they would actually be able to hear things that otherwise he couldn't say. So it's an amazing prayer. So I would ask that you would just pray it with me. Uh, and you're going to have different translations and everything. So I'll probably just go ahead and pray it up here. If you want to do an act of faith, though, we're all about acts of faith. Amen. Go ahead and lift one hand uh, towards heaven. And if this is recorded and someone's watching the recording again, if you go ahead and do this action also, you will heighten what you hear also, as even on the recording. So one hand in the air, and I'll go ahead and pray. Father, we magnify the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will frankly and openly confess that Jesus is Lord. We apply a scriptural prayer now, God. We pray as the Apostle Paul did pray. We ask that you would grant to us unction tonight. We ask that you would open our mouth to make known the mystery like it ought to be made known with all boldness, speaking it boldly as I ought to. I also ask that the preaching and the teaching would be in a demonstration of the spirit and of power. And so right now, if you believe that, please raise your other hand. So we have two hands in the air now, and let's give them a really loud shout if you believe that. Hallelujah, Lord! <clears throat> Good job. Glory to God. Um, we listen to lots of recordings that have already been recorded. That's why it's a recording. But no matter how long ago that recording, like I have one I listened to of Brother Keith Moore, uh, and I don't even know when it was done. It may be the early 2000s. And I've listened to it. I have no idea how many times. But every time I get ready to listen to it, I pray that prayer again. <laughs> and every time I listen to it, I get something else. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to pray that prayer before you listen to any preacher. It'll change the way you hear things. Hallelujah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Got a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, so um, I left Santa Barbara, California. My husband and I, we passed her in Santa Barbara, California. And so uh, I just flew out of there. Uh, we're both Rayma grads, uh, 89, 90s when we went. Um, uh, when I went to Rayma, I wasn't married, neither was he. Uh, then the Lord drop kicked both of us uh, as single people out to California. We ended up getting married out there. <laughs> My husband was originally from Oklahoma, and I am from Kansas, actually. Uh, and then uh, God moved me to, well, I w we moved to St. Louis, and then the Lord, when, after I got saved, drop kicked me down to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it is interesting, um, just driving around here, um, my old friend, Cal Colorado, uh, right before I got saved, <laughs> uh, I was in those years, the strange years, the 20s, when you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. And I was not saved. And so I um, got on this thing called Wilderness Encounters. I wasn't even going to share this, but whatever. And uh, <clears throat> so I just broke, uh, just broke up with a guy, and I was very sad. And I, want, I wanted a change. So I thought, I'm going to Colorado. <clears throat> why? Because I always listen to John Denver, that's why. And so, uh, so then um, we went on the Wilderness Encounter, oh brother, which was really, it's probably trafficking, really. Um, we all, men and women signed, you know, these 20s and 30s, signed up, and they shoved us all in a van. And <laughs> we drove to Colorado, and they promised us to get jobs on dude ranches. And so they dumped me and my one girlfriend off at this dude ranch. I'm like, dude, I'm getting out of here, man. For sure, somebody's feet are in their freezer. It's totally, they're going to kill us. <laughs> and so, and plus we were partying, partying all the time. I was not saved. And so then we caught up with the whole group in Glenwood Springs. And so just fell hopelessly in love with that little city. And uh, so I was there. And then that was when I started dating a guy named Craig Overy. You heard that story. Had I married him, we would have been the ovaries. That's awesome. <laughs> and so, uh, so then Craig, uh, he decided to go back to St. Louis, where we were all from. And I go, well, you can go back, but I'm going to stay a little bit longer. And so he went back, and then I did too. Uh, later on, 
couple months later. But he would say the weirdest stuff. He would say stuff like, um, he would go, well, I'm going to be with the Lord when he comes back. I go, I don't know what you're talking about. You're cute, though, but I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and he would talk about different things about Jesus, and I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, but you look like Superman, so I like you. And so um, I came back to St. Louis, and he w went to a small church there in St. Louis, and he was a great big tall guy. He's on a basketball team there at the Baptist Church. And if he went to two Sundays out of the month, they let him stay on the basketball team. So I got drugged to a Baptist church. And so I'm sitting there one day, and the pastor's like going, some people don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. And I'm like, I don't know who he is. And uh, I thought, this is really weird. And the girl sitting next to me looked really weird. She had like a turtleneck on with a weird necklace. And I don't know who cut her hair. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and this pastor starts talking about some people don't know who the Holy Ghost is. And I'm like, well, I don't know who he is. I don't know what is going on here. And then uh, he, I guess he just invited people up or something. And so uh, the girl next to me, that was so weird, she goes, do you want me to go up there with you? And I go, no. And so I'm just sitting there. <laughs> And then all of a sudden I go, yeah, I do. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't, they didn't preach missing hell. They didn't preach getting saved. They just, I don't know what it was. <laughs> just something pulling me towards the front. And I had to push past Craig, you know, and he's a big guy, and I don't know what he thought. And this girl went up there with me, and so the pastor started praying. And he, would you like me to pray for you, Dan? I go, all right. <laughs> and uh, so he started praying. And then all of a sudden I go, no, I'm going to do it myself. Totally scared him. And uh, I didn't know what was going on, but I said, God, you know, if you're real, I'll do anything to get to know you. Boom. I was instantly changed forever. Hallelujah. And so, and then I, a series of things happened in that church. And the pastor was like, oh my God, she's so weird. Like I would raise my hand in the back of this congregation, ask questions. And he would go, we'll talk about it later. I'd go, I have another question, you know. And uh, <clears throat> they were not a fan of me. Oh, and I got baptized without any undergarments on in a white robe. Go down, come up, hey, you know. And so we got revival, not the good, not the good kind. And so the old guys were like, that was a great day at church. Anyway, um, you would not believe the things that have happened to me. Okay. So <laughs> this is so true. So many things happened to me. My hair caught on fire. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, so... But um, that, those times in Colorado, I just fell in love with this state. And like even just driving around looking at the mountains, my old friends, you know what I mean? And uh, I always liked it too that you would drive that lonely road from Kansas and you're like, there's nothing else out here. And then all of a sudden you see a little bump in the distance and boom, you're in the mountains. <laughs> and so there's nothing subtle about it at all. And then one year, my husband we were here, and he decided to drive up through Estes Park and then take that road all the way to wherever we were going west. And I just remember, there's a big mountain. That's awfully big. And then all of a sudden, there'd be another one peeking over going, I'm bigger. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And then so he just kept going, and the mountains kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until we were on Saturn, I think. I don't know where we were. We were up somewhere where there were no trees and, like, hieroglyphic markings. I'm like... I'm out. And so, uh, and, and then the, also on that trip, a big moose comes up to us, you know, a ginormous moose. And there's a sign, do not feed the moose. And so I had a burrito. I gave it to him. <laughs> but see the 7-Eleven burrito. And so, but he looked like he knew what he was talking about. He's like, you're going to feed me, right? You can just tell they have been fed. Are, am I on the same page here? Yeah, but I don't know what happened to him, but you know what I mean? So I miss our beautiful Colorado. Hallelujah. So, um, but again, my husband and I, we pastor in Santa Barbara, California, and then um, we go way back with the conifers, like before the earth's crust hardened, yeah. <clears throat> and so, uh, <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> excuse me, so we pastor, and then we also travel, and we have an itinerant or traveling arm of the ministry called Prayer School. That's P-R-A-Y-E-R-S-K-O-O-L dot com. The purpose of Prayer School is to help pr to put... Uh, safe, effectual, joyous prayer departments into the local churches. And we are doing that. Hallelujah. And then we just had another arm of the ministry developed called HealingSchool.com. H-E-A-L-I-N-G-S-K-O-O-L.com. These are sessions to help develop healing technicians and also cause the individual Christian to work the word till they trip the gifts of the Spirit themselves. 
Hallelujah. And so uh, with regard to women's meetings, I flew out of Santa Barbara on September 13th, got into Tulsa, drove up into Indiana to attend Pastor Rhonda Garver's women's meeting. And then that's her second women's meeting, I think, this year. I attended her previous one in Alabama. And then I dropped down for Miss Lynette Hagen's Kindle the Flame. And that is a women's meeting also. There's just something about women's meetings. Amen. So Amen. you guys are in the vibe, man. You're in the flow. Hallelujah. I don't get just having a uterus makes for a conference, but whatever. Um, <laughs> for some reason it is. So hallelujah. So let's go ahead and look up our Bible at this one girl. <clears throat> Her name is Eve. Yeah, I'm good. You can just sit there. Thank you. Um, so uh, let's look at Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Thank you for that water. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. So uh, this is the first girl, man. <laughs> Her name is Eve. Hallelujah. So um, <clears throat> Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. This is all so weird here. It says here, now the serpent was more cunning. What? Subtle. What? <laughs> it's talking about like a personality trait of a serpent. Okay, that's really weird. So uh, now the serpent was more cunning than any other beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He, and he said, the, there's a talking snake, right? Cool. Put this on HBO Max. Okay. <clears throat> and he said to the woman, the, the snake is talking. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So we have a talking snake. I'm on board already. He says, Has God really said, You're not going to eat of every tree of the garden? And uh, so, and the woman said to the serpent, Now she's talking to a snake. Get him on board. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it. Or you won't, and you won't touch it unless you die. And so then the serpent says to the woman, you will surely not die. You will not surely die, is what that snake said. Uh, and then, verse 5, for God knows, so he's lying to her now. He's a liar. So verse 5, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes are going to be open. And, uh, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So he's telling her, the minute you do something here that I tell you to do, the minute you believe a lie, your eyes are going to open a certain way. And so, um, and you're going to see things differently. It's <laughs> pretty good. I'm going to send myself an offering on that one. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see here. Verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes are going to be open, and you'll be like God knowing good and evil. The truth is here, they already knew good, and they didn't need to know evil. And so, but they listened to the liar, an expert liar. They listened to him, and when they started listening, when she started listening to him, her eyes opened and she saw things differently. And it says here, uh, uh, let's see here, verse 6. So when the woman saw, see, she's listening to a lie, and now she's looking at it. She's looking at what the liar tells her to look at. Verse 6, so when the woman saw... That the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to, to the eyes. We're talking about one set of bodily organs here. Amen. What kind of ears too, but. And the tree is desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate it. She also uh, gave it to her husband with her and he ate. So in other words, she's listening to a liar. And as she listens to the liar, she keeps looking a certain way. And then she does something with her mouth. The minute she does something with her mouth... Her eyes start, her eyes change instantly, and she sees things different than she's ever seen before. And what she did affected her husband. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Many things here to teach on, but right here, this is a girl. This is a girl listening to uh, a spiritual being. And as she listened to the spiritual being and did something with her mouth, she saw things differently and influenced someone else. And when she influenced someone else, she influenced the whole world and eternity. Mm -hmm. yep. So, women are very important. Amen. 
because they influence things. Yes. Now, if we look in Romans 1, that's an unusual passage. It says what actually happened here is when they fell like this. Now, this says their eyes were opened, but it says in Romans 1 in the New Testament, what happened is the eyes of their heart got darkened. So they were seeing God with these eyes down here, the eyes of their spirit man. But when they did this, when she did that, these eyes closed. And all of a sudden, these fleshly bulbs up here opened, and these fleshly things up here are now the measurement that most women use to, to tell what's true and what's not true. Come on. Yes. And that's wrong. Yes. <laughs> so when we got born again, <clears throat> how many of you are born again? Raise your hand. Severe coolness. When you got born again, the Holy Spirit said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and live in them. Hallelujah. And so he comes to live on the inside of you. And once that happened, those spiritual eyes come open. And you, by faith, see God. And you, by faith, follow God. Hallelujah. And whatever you can do to get that magnification, to get that eyesight 2020 in God, is going to affect you. It's going to affect the immediate people around you. And like it or not, believe it or not, it will create eternal ripples of faith that's affecting the whole world. It goes out to the body of Christ, and then it hits the world. Are you with me here? Amen. Yes. I'm talking about how to be effectual here. Now let's go to another uh, scripture. Uh, it's Luke 21, 25. A day we live in. Luke 21, 25. My husband told me today, he said, when Christians watch the news and then pray what the news says, they're already late. So we as Christians, we take our news reports from God. We take our uh, status updates from God. We get our downloads from God. We get, our app is from God. And we open it up and see what he's saying to us, like what Ms. Joy was saying here. You know what I mean? Check your God app first, okay? So we're talking about how to be um, successful. That's not a terrible word. We're, we're talking about how to be um, fulfill the will of God for your life. And actually affect the world that you see on the news. Hallelujah. So Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, there will be distress of nations. You seen that lately? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. I opened up TikTok the other day, and there was a soldier on there. He's doing a live. I typed in there, Who, what army are you with? Because there's so many armies activated right now. So anyway, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now why, it's not just not talking about the ocean. We just moved to Santa Barbara and there's the ocean right there. And uh, <clears throat> when the Bible talks about this, the sea and the waves roaring, it's when it talks about multiple waters like that that are roaring, that means it's talking about humanity. And over and over through the word of God, it talks about how humanity is like the ocean. See, I was just up in Branson where they got lakes. It's interesting driving here, too. I saw some cute lakes, man. Awesome. I like, and there in Branson, you know, my dad would take me fishing on Table Rock. And it's just a big old lake. Hallelujah. It's so pretty and kind. But now we live in Santa Barbara, close to the ocean. Where, you know, Oprah lives there. Ellen DeGeneres, the stars live there. We're right there. And, uh, and then, of course, you have the surfers. I'm like, I'm out. It's a big toilet. I'm out. I'm not doing it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, and it's, oh, you live in beautiful Santa Barbara, the ocean. Like, yeah. I'll just drink coffee and look at it. It's so pretty. It really is. But if you go in there, you're going to get sand in your butt, and it will not come out. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> but I got stuck with this scripture. Every time I see the ocean, it's never still. It's always moving. Mm -hmm. It's always <sighs> all night long. It, <sighs> it sounds so bad, isn't it? Well, we're so thankful where we live, but I'm like, I remember that scripture. Oh my God. <sighs> when nations of the earth. <sighs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> and it constantly carves away at the beaches. And it, the fact. Your pastor told me that that is a hanging ca Lake Canyon, or what canyon is a hanging tree, or the canyon that we drive up to at Estes Park. 
Thompson? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I asked him how that was made, and he goes, by water. I'm like, wow. I asked him how the Grand Canyon was made, by water. Don't leave the faucet on overnight. <laughs> but so that I said, like, <laughs> and the Bible talks about how we continually, see, there was a flood here. I don't know why I'm talking about this. The world was flooded, and then God said, now it's flooded, but get back now. And there in Genesis 1, 2, it was water. And it's like, okay, now we're going to set up house here. Water, get back. And the earth comes forth, and you will not go across this line. Let's see those waters. They're trying to cool, transgress God's word. That's what I see whenever I go by the ocean. It's like, oh, good. so distress of nations. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Men's hearts failing them from fear. And, expect, and that's just us old guys. 20s and 30-year-olds. Suicide going crazy. 26, men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens are being shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Oh, here he comes. Now verse 28, when these things begin to happen, I am not talking about the fullness of this. I am not talking about the apocalypse. I'm not talking about... Uh, what is the word for the study of the end times? Come on. Eschatology. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the time before Jesus comes to get us. Come on. It says, when these things start to happen, this is your right attitude. Now, when these things begin to happen, now see right here, has anyone ever heard of Kenneth Hagin or no? Anyway, I went to a Bible school, and Brother Hagin was reading this, and he goes, when these things begin to happen, I'm like, he's going to say, rear it up, man. Start praying like a wild man. Rear it up and go after it in prayer. Change the whole world. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. <laughs> now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads. What? Because your redemption's getting really close. So isn't that wild? And we teach on prayer, and we are prayers, and we are going to talk about prayer on Sunday. You shouldn't miss it. Hallelujah. We're going to get into how to change nations. We're going to get into how change, nations have been changed. Hallelujah. But right now, we're talking about our own lives being victorious. Hallelujah. Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption's getting really near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so with this, um, I do have three translations. Uh, let's see here. Oh, those were good too, but I didn't get to read them. They are good though. Hallelujah. Luke 21, 28 in the new NIV says, when these start happening, stand up, lift up your heads because your redemption's getting really close. The Amplified Bible says, when these things begin to occur, stand tall and lift up your heads in joy because as your suffering ends, your redemption's getting closer. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so that sounds very rapturish, and it is, because here comes the Lord. And our correct response is not to try to change this globe we live in. Uh, there are things God will lead us to do to change situations so the lost can get saved. But this is not our home. But the same premise is how you get answers from God. In the midst of a world that's going crazy like that, you don't look at the world, you look at him. Amen. And in the midst of your home, when things are going crazy, you don't look at the crazy, you look at him. In your job, when things look crazy, you don't look at the crazy, you look at him. Amen. In the midst of your bank account, you don't look at the bank account, you look at him. Amen. Yes. In the midst of your job or your boss not liking you, you look at him. In the midst of not knowing what you're called to do, you don't look at what you're not called to do, you look at him. Amen. And as you do that, your sozo, your redemption, your answer will come to you. Are you with me? Now I read these again. Luke 21, 28. When these things start to take place, craziness, stand up and lift up your head because your redemption is just right here. Uh, Amplified Bible. When things begin to occur, stand up and lift your heads in joy 
because your suffering is ending and your redemption is right here. Do you see this? And then, uh, now when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your deliverance is approaching. This is how we will do the, the great escape to go meet the Lord. This is how you look up and lift up and cause your answer to come to you in every situation in your life. How do you do that? It takes strength. It takes spiritual strength to look up. How do you look up? You find a scripture that promises you what you're believing for. You look up a scripture. <laughs> look up a scripture that promises you what you're believing for. Well, I want to have more money in my bank account. Well, look up a scripture that promises you that uh, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he actually became poor, that you through his poverty would become rich. Are you with me here? He came to preach the gospel to the poor. What's the best thing to tell the poor? You ain't got to be poor no more. Yeah, but my mom and dad were broke. And so, so don't say that. You got a new daddy now, Daddy Warbucks. Hallelujah. You have a father. But uh, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more will your heavenly father give things? Give, if he gave you Jesus, won't he give you everything else? You were not redeemed with uh, corruptible things like gold or silver but with the precious blood of Jesus. Um, it's an infidel that doesn't take care of his own. He that does not provide for his own family is worse than an infidel. Do you think our God's an infidel? Do you? No, he is not. And maybe you have not seen him like that, the provider. You can just start saying that scripture. I love what my husband says. You don't have to understand the word, just say it. You don't got to understand it. Just like that snake. Well, then you'll be wise and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to be wise in his eyes. I used to be like a dyed blonde, right? Oh my God, my sugar daddy, right? Is going to take care of me. Hallelujah. I don't got to know how. I just got to know the check's coming. Hallelujah. I'm and that's for everybody, right? Because the whole body of Christ is the second Eve or the bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't got to know. You don't got to know either. And I'll tell you the truth. I'm believing God to revamp me in these areas regarding his prosperity, what it is and what it is not. And so let him do that to you. So when you say, uh, though he was rich, yet for my sakes he became poor, that I through his poverty would become rich. I just keep saying that, and he keeps scrubbing on me and changing me, and all of a sudden I'm seeing, yeah, I got the prosperity of God working in my life. And I know how to tap into it too. Are you with me? Glory to God. And lift up. Look up and lift up is what it says. What you do is you look up your scripture, and then you say it to God in an attitude of thanksgiving until peace and joy comes up, and it lifts you up out of the molly grubs. Are you with me? I look this word up. This lift up is a metaphorical joyous word. Like all of a sudden you get swept up <laughs> in joy. It doesn't look like joy, but I ain't looking at what's around me. I'm looking at him. I'm doing rapture practice right here, man. I'm looking up. I've looked up my scripture, and now I'm going to lift it up to God in an attitude of thanksgiving like it's already come to pass. Oh, my answer's coming to me. It's coming to me. It's coming to me and th up through me to move me into my answer. Are you with me here? So with children, you find your children's scriptures. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved in your whole household. Amen. With finances, again, I just gave you the finance one. There's lots of finances ones, right? We are blessed with believing Abraham. And last time I checked, Abraham was very rich. Hey, two four-letter words to the devil. Rich, very rich. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, depression. Well, don't try to figure out how to get out of depression. Just start saying, the joy of the Lord's my strength. I have the mind of Christ. You're even lost. You don't know what to do. Start saying, I know his voice. I know his voice. I know his voice. Say it all the way through the Starbucks drive-thru. I know his voice. I know his voice. Thank you. Can I have a stopper? Okay. I know his voice. I know his voice. I know his voice. Look up a scripture and then lift it up to God and keep worshiping God with that scripture. What does that mean? Like maybe, like Miss Joy was talking about. 
Make sure you've got your phone with you, man. Make sure your phone's turned on. Your God phone. Where's that? It's stuck right here in your spirit, man. The way to turn it on and make sure you got five bars <laughs> is in the first thing in the morning, you can wake up. Sit down near your coffee or whatever. I thank you, Father God. I got my scriptures. I looked up my scriptures. What am I believing for? Write it down and then find a scripture to match. I thank you, Father. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saved, and so is my whole household. I thank you. You're dealing with my kids, God. Hallelujah. And at first, your mind goes, uh-uh, and the devil goes, uh-uh, but you don't care. You already looked up your scripture, and you're going to say it. You're going to lift it up to God until all of a sudden, your head really does lift up, and you look away from that situation by the hand of God. You see, the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you, he's also called the hand of God. And it takes power to look away from a situation. And it takes power to lift your head. But he is well able to do that. He is well able to do that if you'll do what I'm saying. So if you're blamed for your kids, don't look at them. Look at your scripture. Look up your scripture. I believe, hallelujah, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm saved, and so is my whole household. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm saved, and so is my whole house. As you start doing that, you've looked up your scripture, you're lifting it up, the Holy Ghost will start bubbling up on the inside of you. He'll start bubbling up, and all of a sudden, he starts scrubbing away those thoughts. Hallelujah, he puts on the helmet of salvation. All of a sudden, those weird thoughts can't get through anymore. And all of a sudden, new thoughts come. New thoughts that you say, I thank you, Lord. No matter where they are or what they're doing, I thank you. Your word is stronger than what, uh, than what they're doing. Hallelujah. You said, even if I make my bed in hell, there your hand will lead me. I thank you, Father. You're leading and guiding them. I thank you, Father. You gave your only kid for my kid. I thank you. You're dealing with them. I thank you. You're a good father. You see, I didn't write all this down. You're a good father from whom all fatherhood takes his name. Thank you, God. You're going and getting my kid right now. See? See, when you speak the word until peace and joy start lifting you up. You've looked it up, now we're lifting it up, and now it's lifting you up. Hallelujah. If you say it till your head is lifted up and joy and peace is there, it means your answer is right here. And actually, as it comes to you, you'll start seeing next steps towards that answer. Are you with me here? Yes. Too difficult? Nope. Sure? Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Same thing with finances. Looks like I'm broke. <laughs> Looks like, ah, oh, I thank you. What? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, I thank you. I thank you. Uh, you know, uh, though he's rich, yet for my sake, he became poor, that I through that poverty would become rich. I thank you no matter what it looks like or feels like. I'm rich. Here's my scripture. I looked it up. Now I'm lifting it up. I thank you. By your, by your grace, Father, I'm rich. I'm rich. By your grace, I'm rich. Your mind's going, Bleh. The devil's going, ah, but you just keep doing it. Hallelujah. And here comes that strong hand to lift your head up and cast the care off onto him. And all of a sudden you're like, I should make a cake. All of a sudden because you forgot about it. Why'd you forget about it? Because you rolled it over on him and now he's taking care of your finances. Are you with me here? Yes. Amen. Good job. I like those amens. Great. So, there's two, there's two. so here's the other thing. I tried to write this down. So um, it's not between me and my kid. It's not between me and the bank. It's not between me and the doctor either. <laughs> it's not between me and the doctor. It's in a private laboratory of me with God. And as I'm in a private laboratory with God, we create together. I take my scripture, what I'm believing, and I, I've looked it up, I lift it up to him, and redemption starts coming towards me and up on the inside of me. And in the midst of it, as peace and joy appears, my redemption is right there, and I'm in the middle of it. Are you with me? Yeah. Redemption's a big word. My redemption regarding my finances is right here. It's right here. It's realer than that chair to me and to you. 
if you take the power of God's word and you lift it up to him, he will lift you up. And as that happens, that scripture will become alive on the inside of you instead of be some stupid Eve that messed everything up. I don't even know if she was supposed to give birth the way she did. Because it says, oh, now you messed up. You're going to give birth in, with blood and pain. Thanks. But I don't even know. Who knows? Maybe just had a way for her to conceive like Mary did. The word of the Lord uh, broke open on the inside of her. Are you with me here? I can. I'm going to send myself an offering. That's amazing. I never said that before. Uh, you become the second Eve. You help redeem things. Are you with me? Now, some people like Joel Osteen, his church is so big. Like Pastor Ray's like, get that church off the screen. It's depressing. <laughs> He's like, the children's ministry is bigger than Rainbow Bible Church. Anyway, <clears throat> but hallelujah. But I've been reading after different men of God that are amazing, and they say it's not about doing all these big works. It's about hearing from God or having a desire in your heart from God and then taking a scripture, worshiping God, worshiping God with it until it comes to pass so that then you can go out there and prove he's, not, he's still alive. Amen. Come on. Those powerful things you can do. Yes. Sets aside natural laws and proves in the little market, he's still alive. Proves in Walmart, he's still alive. Are you with me here? Yes. Yes. Amen. So I wrote this down. In the laboratory with God, it can even be like an into the intimacy of the bedroom, possibly, where our Lord and Savior, or the head of the church, our husband, with Eve, produce. Hallelujah. And I wrote this down. In that place where you lift up that scripture, and, and you, you look it up, you lift it up, here comes the power. Something, as peace and joy starts welling up on the inside, and God gives you pictures of it, that's it. That's your answer that you are actually talking to now, interacting with, touching it, receiving it. Hallelujah. And you do that, it's going to pop up on the outside. Are you with me here? Yes, Amen. I wrote this down. Uh, uh, look up and lift up. Uh, wh where do I see it? Here in my heart, not out there. Here, getting back to the real eyes, right? Here is in my spirit. Here is where I see the real updated what's really happening. Are you with me? Great. Here is where I grab a hold of what I see. Here. And don't think it's hard. It's not hard. If you just start speaking the scriptures, that peace and joy will show up and that answer is goo right there. And you are in the middle of it. You are pro you're producing it. You're creating it right here. Now see, then you go out through your day and someone will cuss at you or, you know, uh, like I had a lady the other day, she sneezed and bleh, right on the back of my neck and I'm like, oh, I'm walking in love because if not, I will strangle you. And, you know, and then you keep going, you know, someone cuts you off in traffic and somebody, you know, uh, short changes you on your change or, you know, or you go through uh, the taco place like I did a few weeks ago and they messed my whole order up and I was already home and I'm like, oh, I believe they're blessed. <laughs> and uh, so you go out there, I had an amazing experience this morning I was in the midst of my answer and then I got here and now I just want to hurt a Taco Bueno employee <laughs> <laughs> but no worries God knows you live in this world Amen. but get back to the lab yeah. right Amen. and the more you spend time <coughs> in the lab like that it'll start changing your desire to murder the Taco Bueno employee <laughs> are you with me here We'll be talking about this, but I think one reason a lot of Christians are like rare towards politics and rare towards I got a right and rare I don't like the way you talk to me and rare, rare. When I start acting like that, the Lord's like, hey, Dana, why are you over here trying to stir things up? Get back over where you and I are working together about the plan and purpose of God for your life. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh. Because even when you're doing that in the lab creating, <laughs> in the lab creating, oh, the peace of God floods your physical body. It floods your mind, will, joy comes up. 
And that is literal strength. Like, I drank a monster before I got on the airplane, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm very victorious. No, I'm not. I'm just hyped up. But as I take a scripture and worship God with it till peace and joy, I'm not talking about rat tat tat, just saying the scripture. I bless with believing Abraham. I bless with believing Abraham. I'm blessed with believing Abraham. I'm very rich. I'm blessed with believing Abraham. Look, it looks like I'm going to get, I feel like I'm going to get hemorrhoids doing it like that. <laughs> According to the Old Testament, uh, emeralds are in li- large veins in the rectum, and you're redeemed from them. But if you said, uh, I bless with believing Abraham. I said the word like that too. And the Lord's like, Dana! Relax. <laughs> He's like, look at your body posture. I'm like, what? I kind of look like a lizard, don't I? Ah! <laughs> Sit back in your chair, Dana. Unclench your rectal muscles. That's the title of this message. Rectal muscles. Well, that's a very different women's a very different women's seminar. Yeah, you got that right. So at the church there, you know, they want to have a women's meeting. Or they want to have women's fellowships. I'm like, whatever. Because uh, I don't want, I don't know. Anyway, so, so I'd do an ad for them. So I found an old picture of me dressed like fat Elvis. Do you remember when Elvis was fat? Uh, I don't know, I'm looking at you. Uh, maybe you like Elvis. Uh, so I dressed up as fat Elvis, and I had a white zip-up uh, jumpsuit with glasses. And, yeah. And so I put that on there. I go, come to the women's fellowship. <laughs> and Lani's like, wow, that's very interesting. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is the women's conference here. Hallelujah. So, but, the uh, Lord's like, you're not supposed to say the word like that. Well, I said it 55 times. Isn't that good? And see, you're, look how you're, look at your demeanor, Dana. It's not about that, dude. You need to sit back. Take a deep breath. And take that word that you looked up and lifted up to me until all of a sudden I flood you with peace and joy and I'm all you see. Are you with me here? We can do it right now. Let's do it right now. Lean back in your chair. I know it sounds weird, but do it. (laughs) Yeah, make you do that. And I go steal all your wallets. That's hilarious. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, um, let's do this. Yeah, until so let's breathe in real deep. And breathe out. The Holy Ghost is called the spirit or pneuma breath of God. Let's do it again. Breathe in. And breathe out. Let's say this. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In 1 John. In 1 John. Uh, it, says, it says. Now, I should be able to hear your voice when you're saying this. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Good. In First John, in 1 John, it says I have an anointing right in the middle of me. So no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, I have an anointing, and I know all things. I know everything I need to know. Take another deep breath. Breathe out. I am your sheep. I I know your voice. voice. And I'm following you. you. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like. like. You're You're working things out. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. This is very important, especially if you don't feel like ha, ha. Ready? Do it again. Ha, ha, ha. If you want to do a giggle, there will be good too. <laughs> oh, you're working everything out. You're working everything out. Ha ha ha! Good job. Right there. Right there. Your body gets quickened, and if oppression is pushed away from you, and little answers start to come, even if you don't know everything, you got that. Everything's going to work out. Are you with me here? Glory to God. In this place, you'll start having peace and joy, first of all. That means the laboratory, all the machinery's on, and we're, we're making something now. Uh, it says, here, down here is where I grab a hold of what I see. In this arena down here is where I actually start to see him. 
uh, through this lens and through this witness, I start to see him. A witness is someone who saw something. The Bible says that we have a witness. If you say that scripture and attitude, peace and joy, until peace and joy shows up, you'll start to witness answers down here. Oh, I do see, I do see my son saved. Oh, and next time you're around your son, the Holy Ghost will tell you what to say and not say. And the next time you're on your son, the Holy Ghost will give you little clues. Look, I'm doing this in his life, and he don't even know it. Are you with me here? Uh, let's see here. Joe Morris said, when he comes, when Jesus comes, we will witness him. I believe in inward witness. And then there's this funny scripture here. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we will see him as he is. See, when you see see it you will be it when you see your answer you have your answer are you with me here Amen. i looked up these words in this laboratory i actually experience him in the answer um faith is the substance of things not seen yet out here but you're seeing it down here aren't you yes. oh dude and these eyes will get stronger and stronger and they'll overtake these eyes and you'll see things differently and things will be differently then. I contact him and the answer. I touch, grab hold of him and the answer. I receive the answer. I have it now. I have evidence. I have proof down here. It's the actual evidence of what I look for. I stare at it. Some of those translations about Eve looking at that tree says she, she became enamored with it. She just stared at it. See, the longer you stare at it down here, what God's telling you, you'll have it Amen. hallelujah um if you can see it with these eyes you'll see it with these eyes hallelujah i'm obsessed with him and that answer i literally am becoming part of that answer it consumes me i am finally overcome by it as it overcomes me hallelujah this is how we get answers are you with me yes. hallelujah so actual practical uh, application um, <clears throat> well, we get there. So, a friend of mine, I was telling Pastor uh, Marianne about different scenarios here. Her son uh, was steeped in drugs, and so much so that not only was he steeped in drugs, he started breaking into the houses of different family members and friends and stealing. And so she prayed for him a lot. And so one day he walked across the floor of the house and he said, well, I don't believe in God anymore and I'm leaving. I'm not going to have nothing to do with church or anything. And she looked at him and said, I'm not praying for you anymore. Now, I just talked with my friend about this today. For her to say that to him, she wasn't mad. It took every ounce of faith that she had to say it to him. I'm not praying for you anymore. And he goes, what? <laughs> and she goes, that's right, I'm not. And he goes, but what if I, no, I'm not. I was talking to her about it, and she's been standing, worshiping God with the scripture. Uh, uh, the Father, you're the father who, who all fatherhood takes its name. And she was just talking to him, standing on that scripture. I think you're dealing with my son, and what are we going to do about our son, God? Here's the other thing. Nobody has a perfect family. Amen. Nobody. I don't care. I don't know where this idyllic family came from because everything's fractured since the fall. So the, you are in good luck because God is your father. And he's the only one that knows how this stuff works. So praise God. Amen. You're in good company. But she would work through the tears. What are we doing with, my, with our son? Our son, she said. I thank you, Father. You're his father, and things are changing in him. She worshiped God until peace and joy came to settle her soul enough to say, no, I'm not chasing after you no more. And right after that's when he turned around. He turned around, got a job. He's been working at that job for three years now. Talked to her about it again today. And, uh, but now she's getting ready to do some other things, because even though he got a job, he's really not acting right towards his little girl. Uh, he, started, uh, he started dating this other girl that has all these kids. And, and I don't know, he's just really interested in her and those kids. He's kind of been neglecting his little girl from the first marriage. And so my friend just keeps 
trying to shield that little girl from that. And finally, and she keeps worshiping God with these scriptures regarding him and that little girl. But finally, she said, Dana, I had to tell her, look, your daddy's doing this, so you're just going to have to, that's how it is. I said, how'd you say that to her? She was, God help me. God help me to protect her. You see these things? As you speak the word of God, the love of God will come up in you. And people are so stupid. Christians especially are stupid. Well, the love of God. See this? When people look like that, they're dumb. Uh, the love of God is Jesus on the cross ripped open. The love of God is where this mom worshiped God so much that the strength came up in her to say, you're not going to do this, or you're going to do this, and this is what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. The love of God comes up too and doesn't bug them either. <laughs> Which takes a lot more men, right? Because women, I, 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 we want to talk, right? Helps us not nag our husbands too. Guys in here should have said amen. Hallelujah. Right? Helps us look at God instead of them. And as we look at God, it actually changes the dynamic of the relationship. And we end up getting a whole lot more than what we thought we would. He can fix it. You can nag God all you want, but nag him in faith. Hallelujah. As you worship God, you know, like with my husband, I say, oh, I love my husband, I respect my husband, I submit to my husband, and I help my husband. By faith! Because I have no idea a lot of times that looks like the natural. <laughs> I'm trying to do all these things that they say wifey wife is supposed to do, like cooking. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I'm in there cooking. I just made this soup. And whoever wrote it, the whoever was in the make of the soup, uh, she wrote uh, the recipe, uh, and she's not able to construct sentences well. I sound more like a vampire. Anyway, uh, and so right in the middle of the recipe, I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, what does this mean? I don't understand this. This is a run-on sentence with no direct object. What is happening here? And so I just try to figure it out, right? And a pinch of this. Why is she saying pinch? How does she know how big my thumb is? You can't, what's happening? <laughs> and so Lonnie out there in the living room trying to bless him, right? He's like, oh God, she's cooking again. <laughs> what's she doing? You bang, bang, that's stupid. What? Are you kidding me? Then I'm cutting onions. I'm like, oh, you hate this. Why is cooking so mean? It'll spit at you from the... It spits at you and burns you. And I'm trying to cut onions. And it's like, I'm going to kill your retina. I'm like, what did I ever do? And Lonnie's like, what's wrong? The onion's trying to kill me, man. He's like, let me do it. No! I'm here to bless you. Shut up and get in there like wow what a, what a blessing he comes in and goes Dana why don't you let me cut the onions no by god I'm a good wife <laughs> he goes you know what Dana I find it uh relaxing to just chop onions I'm like what are you Hitler <laughs> I mean you know I was like what yeah Dana I like cutting onions then have at it <laughs> have a fun day he's like you know what Dana because I also say, did you read the recipe? So scared. But uh, I was just at um, Kindle the Flame, and Denise Hagen stood up, and she goes, you know, women have been, uh, it's been messed up because society and the church have tried to define what a woman is by a domestic role instead of it just being a woman. <laughs> right? So I'm like, I got to wear aprons. I got to, ah, you know what I mean? Help, God, you know. But you, you don't got to be anything society makes you into trying to be. Amen. Right? Amen. Yes. You don't got to be anything that the church is trying to mold you into. Yeah. If you worship God with what you're called to do, he will make an amazing you. And he will break that image that the, that the religious church has made up. And the world too. He will, make, uh, he will show you what a new creation you are. Hallelujah, the real you. And when he does this, he restores the genders too to show them what a woman is and what she is not. Hallelujah. And then that shows him, shows everyone also what he begot. 
he begot you. And it shows the world what a true uh, father he is and what a real daughter looks like. And you will save the generations too, for they are confused, and rightly so, because the church and the world have messed everything up, trying to make definitions that in God's eyes are a no-no. <laughs> Please find out what God called you to do. Please. Because when you do, you become the fingerprint of God. Number one, you prove he's alive. And also, say, he is the premise of the Vangelisalot Ariel. He is the carriage and the monstre, Khaled and the Malian, Jelik Alasuta Kampra Fire. He is the true creator. He is the definition of creativity. And as you look to him, he will cause you to walk forth in this beautiful beauty he calls you to be. Do you understand me? Glory to God. A living epistle, known and even read by all men. <laughs> if you're not married, hey, baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Actually, you stand in your role helps men to stand in their role, rightly, strongly. <clears throat> God has been so lied against. <laughs> you look at Deborah, she was a mighty warrior. You look at the Proverbs 31 girl, which I try not to look at much. Because she put me to shame. <laughs> strong women, smart women, hallelujah. Uh, tender women, strong, they change, they change everything, hallelujah. And the Lord told me as they line up, men will line up as never before, and then the Lord will come back, hallelujah. Are you still with me? Yes. Trust God. Trust God uh, with what you're called to do. Ask God what you're called to do. You can pray the Ephesians prayer also. Ephesians 1, 17 through 23. You can pray that over yourself and God will start showing you what you're called to do. Ephesians 1, you can write that down. <coughs> Ephesians 1, colon 17, 23. Start praying it over yourself every day. Again, remember, you don't have to understand it. Just pray it and go to work. Just pray it and mop. Just pray it. I don't know what you do. Pray it and bake. Pray it and uh, play video games. I don't know. Pray it and believe God, and he'll start showing you what you're called to do. And it might be multifaceted, too. Well, I thought I'm just supposed to do this, but this, too. Hey, God is stretching me like I've never been stretched before. <laughs> you might be multi multifaceted, a multifaceted door that people of all different walks of life walk right through you. Hallelujah. Because you dare to believe God to do what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Which is an entrance into him too. Are you with me here? A lot of prophesying going on. Uh, uh, one of my teachers at Rhema, she was believing God so much for her brother. And she's standing on scriptures, worshiping God with scriptures, and all of a sudden the Lord said to her, uh, you need to go overseas with your husband. She's like, I can't go overseas. I have to take care of my brother. I have to make sure he serves God. And he goes, no, no, no. You need to go with your husband overseas and get out of my way. The quickest way to reach your family members is to obey God. That's how I, my family members got saved. I, every time they would act weird or stu weird, stupid, and, you know, I didn't think they were going to get saved, didn't look like it, I kept saying on Matthew uh, 6.33, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all these things that everyone's always seeking. Proverbs says, if you find a wife, you find a good thing. If a wife can be a thing, my family can be a thing. And so I'm seeking first your kingdom violently to do what you call me to do. And as I seek and permeate into your family and do what my father says, you're going to drag my family in too. And yeah, yes, good amen. Good, I felt right here. Good. It's almost like the price is right. We have a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And God has done that. He's drug all my family members in. And I didn't have to ding dong them or beat them or kidnap them in the night and have someone water torture them until they receive Jesus as their Savior. That's always a good way. Hallelujah. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, right. We'll do that. Oh, that's interesting. 
Yep, healing. I was just at this one meeting, and uh, it was at Brother Moore's church, and um, Mrs. Moore, I guess, dealt with COVID, like, really bad. And um, she said, I, w I didn't know, she goes, it didn't look like I was going to make it. But she got her scripture, right? She got her scripture, and she looked it up, and she lifted it up. Hallelujah. And as she did that, she said, I'd make myself get out of bed and get on the treadmill and walk some steps. I did it by faith. Hallelujah. And guess what? She's alive today. Amen. Brother Copeland was there too. He said, now, last year or a year before, I was in so much pain here at this meeting. I was standing up worshiping God and crying. But God said, you get on that treadmill and walk. You find your scripture. You look it up. You lift it up. And here comes that redemption power, man, working in you. One step at a time till he walked right out of back, back trouble. Are you with me here? Yes. Amen. You get it. You look it up. You lift it up until love lifts you up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I heard this thing about Pastor Ray. I was telling him, uh, I guess something happened to his knee. And uh, the doctor's like, you have to stay in bed. And so he was in bed, but he's got, those script, got scripture, right? Look it up, lift it up. And now the son, the Lord brings him to his remembrance something Brother Hagen had said to him by the Lord when he was raised up. The Lord said, well, people ought to be up at 9 a.m. So here's Pastor Ray with his knee, and he's like, what? See? He, took a, he looked up a scripture. He lifted it up. And now in this laboratory of God, the wild Holy Ghost <laughs> uh, mad scientist goes, ha, 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 it's time for you to stand up. <laughs> I don't know if he, and, and Pastor Ray's like, what? <laughs> I looked up, I lift up, the redemption starts working, and you've given the Holy Ghost, the creator, something to work with. And all of a sudden he goes, ha, 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 ha. well, people ought to be up at 9 a.m., <laughs> And I'm not talking about an audible voice. I'm talking about all of a sudden he's like, uh, <laughs> a thought came to him that obviously was not his own because his knee's going, uh-uh. <laughs> his big dumb body's going, uh, you ain't doing that to me. But I didn't hear him. All of a sudden his eyes open up and ha, ha the mad scientist, the Holy Ghost. Ha, ha, ha. It's alive. <laughs> well, people ought to be up at 9 a.m. <laughs> so Pastor Ray, uh, and Pastor Beth, tell me, she said he just got up, and she's like, Ray, you're supposed to be in bed. <laughs> He's like, well, people ought to be up at 9 a.m. <laughs> like, Whoa. there was a good, a someone greater than him in there. Uh, and she goes, but you need to, I'm getting up. You see that? And uh, it's so contrary to what these eyes say. These eyes are like, oh, your knee looks like a pretzel. I wouldn't. But these eyes flipped open and go, I see something else. Hallelujah. I see another report, and I'm hooked up with the great creator, and he says, get up. So Pastor Ray got up and used that knee, and he's fine now. <laughs> are you with me here? Is this feminine enough for everyone? Okay. One more thing. We're talking about the eyes of the Holy Ghost opening, right? Find the scripture. That's how you open up these eyes. Ooh, that's how you open these eyes up. You find a scripture. You look it up. It just takes even these eyes to look it up, doesn't it? There's a lot of scriptures in there, right? But the, I, I choose this one. These eyes chose this one. Already, wild act of faith, right? I say these eyes are looking at it, right? And now I'm going to lift it up. Lift it up to the Lord in thanksgiving till peace and joy. And now here comes the workings of God. One way to even take this further is to buy a bulletin board. Stick it up somewhere in your house. Write the word vision board on there. And start sticking stuff up there you're believing for. It's so fun. You, you're believing for something, you can stick a pin in it, man, by faith. So we stick. Stuck a, uh, uh, we stuck a house in Santa Barbara on a board. How? It's so expensive there. 
Uh, we stuck our car paid off. ka -chew. We stuck a worship leader that's so cool on there. ka, -ka. Uh, Literally, I took a picture of Pastor Mark Garver's uh, guy worship leader. He don't know. He's on my board with a pin stuck through his head. <laughs> then I call one of Brother Moore's worship leaders. They go, hey, guys. I just want you to know I'm sticking a pin in your face. They're like, I'm sorry. What does that mean? Because I caught one like that. <laughs> Stuck that up there. Stuck some dental work up there. Anything we could think of that we could believe for so that these eyes can be looking at it. So that this laboratory can go, okay, we got to work on that one there too. Just even putting it up there, all of a sudden these eyes are like, yeah, I see it. I see it. And when the eyes see it, the hand of God starts to reach and bring it to you. Are you with me here? Amen. Okay, I'm just going to tell you this. It totally sounds like voodoo, right? You know that voodoo's wrong. Do you know that? <laughs> Like getting a doll with someone's hair and sick and pin. No, don't do that. But uh, the vision board's been working so good, like just bringing answers in, that I stuck one of our church members up there. <laughs> one of our church members that um, we were believing to get married because they were shacking up together. And so we didn't want to bug them or anything. You know what I mean? But we knew that there would be a great blessing for them if they would get married. And so we're trying to, blah, 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 we're trying to talk to them. So I'm like, I'm out. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> Stick them on the board. <laughs> I stuck them up there. They got married like a, two months later. Holy Ghost goes, oh, I see that. And I, you just did this. You wrote it, and you s put it up there and stuck a pin in it. You did all these acts of faith. I can work with faith. Hallelujah. And here he is in the creative laboratory making it come about. Hallelujah. And our car got paid off. Hallelujah. And then I wrote up there, uh, I wrote up there a uh, place in Santa Barbara to live. And last year in September, all of a sudden, strange magic started happening. And we found out about a couple there in Santa Barbara that were relinquishing their church. And we, we, I, th I thought, I'll just tell them we want it without even asking Lonnie. I go, we'll take it and have two churches, right, in Santa Barbara because we're believing to live there. Wouldn't hurt to take church. And I called Lonnie, and I told him, I go, hey, guess what I just did? I told these people we're going to take their church to freak him out. You know what I mean? Because it's hilarious. And he goes, good. I go, what? And I freaked myself out. And before I got home, he had already set up a meeting with them. Mm, find a promise. Amen. Let these eyes go. Ooh, isn't that so fun to let them look up promises? Hallelujah. F let them find a promise. Then once you have... Look it up, then lift it up. Hallelujah. And let that laboratory start working. And he will bring to pass so many things in your life. Are you with me here? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to go ahead and pray for you. Father, we worship you. We magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, my Father, that these things, it's a comma, it's as near as your heart and in your mouth. Hallelujah. Any answer you need. <laughs> It's not far from you. It's not far from you. It's as near as your heart and your mouth. And it's only between you and God. Yeah, but all this other stuff has to change. Before. No, it's between you and God. You and God decide what's going on. Amen. You and God, as you find your scripture, hallelujah. And if osa elebaso yedirayan in sekela charo, Yazea Voto, get a Messiah, get a notebook, Gasi and Shelem Aquaya, start writing down what you desire, Yasti Vocha, dare to write down a scripture that matches that, and start watching God move. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead and lift up your hands, Father God. Uh, say this after me. Say, Father God. Father God. No, you don't have to, but if you mean it, do it. Father God. I thank you for what was preached. I ask you to help me to be a doer of this. Help me, Lord. And I thank you by faith you are helping me. I thank you. You're helping me step by step to walk it out. And I'll give you all the glory. All the glory. Now let's give him a shout. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God.
I was just at Brother Moore's meeting, and he said, you know what is the biggest witness? And I've read after Bosworth, Christ the Healer, all kind of different people, and they're saying the same thing, that don't let preachers trick you, not that these would, but some preachers try to make you feel, oh, I got to do all this stuff. No, if you'll just believe God for promises in your life, your life will get better and better. And then what happens is the Holy Ghost just is radiating through you. And people just come to you. They'll just come to you. They see, oh, they see peace and joy. They don't see it anywhere. Nowhere else is there peace and joy. And I'm not talking about perfection. I'm just talking about walking in faith. This peace and joy will emanate through you to other people. And soul winning is the easiest thing in the world then. They just come up to you and start gumming you, you know, like a, a fish on a lure. And then you just see how the God moves, and then you just, uh, you can set the hook really quick. Well, I'm doing good, my Lord, da da da, and, my, and He could help you too. He could, yeah, let's set the hook right here. Amen. You know, it don't take long to set the hook, right? You don't got to make them crawl across glass. You don't have to have the whole road to Romans, all this stuff. Just real quick, help them to call in the name of the Lord. <laughs> And they'll be saved. Hallelujah. And then once in, you hook them, bring them here, they'll cook them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? Amen? One more time, let's give them a shout. Hallelujah, Lord! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did I go too long, Pastor?